Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Um, it is Monday, June 1st. And before we get started, um, I think that it is important to acknowledge very briefly, um, because I know folks are here to do yoga, but I think it is also important to acknowledge um, what is going on in terms of obviously globally with the pandemic, but also here in the United States, there have been significant, you know, uh, racial incidences, um, or rather racial, racist incidents. Um, and I think it's very important to acknowledge those. And um, I hope that this practice can be a, a respite if you need it, a, a place where you can find refuge and rest and take care of yourself, a place where um, maybe you can process some of the feelings that you're experiencing, some of the thoughts you might be having, um, and also a, a place for um, us to be able to come back to that yogic philosophy, that yogic idea that we are all connected, that all beings are connected, um, no matter you know what. And so I won't take up too much more of your time, but you can tell it's, it's definitely um, even challenging for me to talk about. And um, I am a privileged white woman, so... As for today's practice, um, we will be incorporating some meditation uh, at the start as well as um, near the end of meditation of our practice, excuse me. And um, I hope that it can, again, provide just a sense of calm or a brief respite from um, anything that you're dealing with in your life. So as usual, we will be practicing in yoga. I don't think I even introduced myself. My name is Shelby Dwyer. I'm a counselor at University Health and Counseling Services. Uh, this is Yoga for Mental Wellness in collaboration with the Center for Spirituality, Dialogue, and Service. And I'm very grateful to be here live with you every Monday at 4 p.m., excluding holidays. So yin yoga is the practice that we will be doing um, typically almost every time we meet. Uh, it is a practice that is rooted in traditional Chinese medicine and focuses on helping energy flow more freely through the body. And also in the more scientific realm, it is helping the connected tissues in the body be more resilient, more healthy, more uh, fluid and juicy and um, able to support the rest of our body in a, in a strong sense. So whereas a vinyasa practice, that like really fast one breath per movement, super fitnessy kind of thing, where that focuses on the muscles, we're actually focusing on connected tissues in the body. So that could mean focusing on, um, or excuse me, the connective tissues means focusing on the joints, the ligaments, the fascia. We're also even um, targeting the bones and by stressing our bodies in certain ways. I'm aware that there's a weird little light issue. So sorry about that. Um, but it's definitely a strengthening practice, a grounding practice, and um, a much more slow practice. And so I'll invite you if at any point, anything feels sharp, painful, uncomfortable, in the sense that it's it's um, too extreme, gently ease yourself out of it. You are the expert of your body. You know yourself best. Do what's best for you. If you need to lay on your mat today and not do anything, please take care of yourself. You know what's best for you. Everything that I say is just an offering um, and really trust that you know what's best for yourself. It may also just be that today, maybe you need to check in with yourself and, and just, you know, sit on your mat and maybe listen or watch. So please do whatever you need to. Um, you know, I can't see you anyway. <laughs> so um, do what's best for you. So first, apologies if you can hear some outside noise. I have a window open um, just to get some air flowing, but I hope you can't hear that construction going on outside. But first, why don't you find a comfortable seated position? That might mean sitting cross-legged, you could also potentially, if you wanted to, sit on a blanket, maybe the edge of a blanket or even like a small pillow. Really quickly, I should have mentioned this earlier, we will be using two blocks or if you have a stack of books that you could use, maybe two textbooks, as well as a pillow or a yoga bolster if you have one. And a blanket, again, could be useful to sit on as well as um, to offer yourself some support in uh, Shavasana at the end of our practice. In addition to sitting cross-legged, you may also decide that you wanna sit on your shins you could have your toes tucked or potentially untucked. We will be here for a few minutes though, so be mindful that in this position, you're straining your toes quite a bit. 
and in the position with your toes flat and um, tops of your feet flat against the earth, you're uh, putting a bit of a strain on the ankles. It can be a nice stretch, but it might be a little much for a few minutes. So however you'd like to find your seat. If it feels safe to do so, you could close your eyes now. You could also keep them open if you prefer, maybe gazing a few feet in front of your body or potentially across the room just below, directly across from you. You can rest your hands in your lap if you'd like. And just notice for a moment what it feels like to just pause and to be in this seated position, however you are seated. Notice what is coming up for you in this moment. See if you can allow any of those thoughts or emotions or sensations to float through your mind. The brain has a tendency to try and resolve any questions that might come up or concerns or worries. It's designed to keep us safe and so it wants to protect us from harm, even the mental kind of harm that might come from thoughts that are more stressful. Can you allow any thoughts that arise, again, to pass through your mind without judgment, without labeling them, trying to make meaning of them? You might even imagine that you've got oil or soap on your hands and in your mind's eye, you're trying to grab those thoughts because that's what we do. We pay attention to those thoughts but maybe because your hands are slippery from the soap or the oil, they just slip right out. And so allowing those thoughts to just slip through your mind. Hold space for yourself in this moment, in that non-judgmental capacity. Allowing yourself to be as you are in this moment. Checking in with your soul. Just saying, how am I doing? How am I doing today? If you feel compelled, you could bring your hands to your heart or even wrap your arms around yourself, giving yourself a little bit of squeeze, maybe tucking your chin toward your chest. If it feels safe to do so, turn your awareness now to your breath, allowing your body to continue to breathe itself naturally just as it does each day. Notice where in your body is your breath moving. Does it feel more comfortable to allow the breath to flow in through the nose and out through the mouth? Does it feel good to sigh? Are you breathing more into your chest or more into your belly?
Allow your breath to lengthen. Taking in some deeper inhales. Exhaling deeply, maybe with a sigh. If you'd like, you might introduce some tapping, bringing your hands to your thighs, and just gently tapping one hand and then the other at a pace that feels right for you. You might focus on the tapping instead of your breath. You might even count the number of taps and then breathe in and out for the set number. We won't be here for too much longer, so keep taking some deep inhales and exhales. Belly is soft, jaw is soft, your forehead smooth. Long spine, shoulders down and back. Take another long, full breath in. And sigh out. Start to slow down the tapping until you gently stop. And then extend your legs long out in front of you. And you might remove the blanket from underneath your seat if you had it under you. And you'll want your pillow or your bolster. And you'll lay the bolster along your legs, maybe bringing it up so that part of it rests just up against your stomach. You might take your blanket and put it on top of the bolster or pillow. And then bring your hands alongside your hips. Press your hands into the floor beneath you. Really lengthen your spine. Make sure that your chin is about parallel to the floor beneath you. So that might mean you might need to tuck your chin just slightly. And you can imagine that there's this invisible string that runs from the base of your spine all the way up your spine through the crown of your head that just keeps your spine really nice and long. And here is a good place to stay, especially if anyone has back sensitivities or back pain. You could also, though, begin to lean forward over your bolster, your pillow, maybe lengthening your arms over the pillow, maybe hugging it or reaching for your feet. If you decide here to round the spine, maybe you rest your chin or even your forehead or one cheek onto your pillow. Ensure though, as you round forward that you have space in your torso to really breathe fully and just as deeply as you were breathing when you were seated upright. If holding on to the bolster or pillow feels like it's a bit much, you can always rest your arms alongside you. And here, if you're rounding forward, you might experience a, almost like a melting of your shoulder blades as your shoulders round forward and down. Maybe even like a spreading of your, your back as you round forward. You might feel some sensation across the back of your legs as you're targeting more of the hamstrings in this shape, or you might get a stretch in your hamstrings. And so find what works for you here. You might have to adjust as I just did by removing the blanket. But you want to be at about a four or five out of 10 on a scale of one to 10 where one is, I could go to sleep here. <laughs> and 10 is, this is really challenging. I need to get out of this. So not too intense, not too gentle. 
but somewhere in the middle. And that scale is how we sort of define the sensation we may be experiencing in our bodies. So notice if that four or five out of 10 is happening in the legs, the back of the legs, or along the spine. And then see if you can find relative stillness. It's really allowing your body to melt over your torso, excuse me, over your pillow or your bolster. Allowing your torso to either be upright or cascading over your low legs. Allowing your body to be heavy here and the muscles relaxed. So this shape is called caterpillar. And in yin yoga, the shapes typically have um, more like animal names or, or names from nature, like twisted roots, sleeping swan, caterpillar, which we're in now. And this type of a forward bend, especially where the heart is protected. It can offer a sense of calm in your body and even potentially activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is that rest and digest part of our autonomic nervous system. That's what allows us to relax and feel a sense of calm. You take some deep breaths and target that breath maybe to your spine, to your low back. Allowing that breath as it moves in to wing your ribs out so that it almost massages your back body. Take another long, deep breath in here. Exhale, use your arms to push your torso upright for a moment. Notice before moving any further, if there's anything that has shifted in your body. As we come back to a straight spine, you might notice an achiness across your spine or in your back, maybe in your legs. That's actually a sign that you've targeted the fascia in your body, which is this connective webbing. And uh, there's some research, although I don't know as much about it, where they're finding that it's almost like a whole other nervous system in the body. And so when that feels achy, it's almost like a muscle soreness, except it's actually your connective tissue soreness. And so just like when you work a muscle, you feel pretty sore shortly after. That's what's happening with the connective tissues. So move your pillow or your bolster off to the side for a moment. And then you'll extend your legs long again, but this time you'll bend your uh, right leg back, bending at the knee, and then bringing your right heel to just outside of your right hip. You could potentially stay here, right? Seated upright, this might be enough. Any knee sensitivity, you can bring your blanket underneath your right knee. You could also fold your mat over if you just need a little bit of cushion. And then you could also potentially start to walk yourself back. 
Make sure that your knee is coming straight out from your hip. Again, your right foot is on the side of your right hip. And maybe you come back to your forearms, propped up on elbows. This might be enough sensitivity or um, enough sensation, excuse me, on the top of your right thigh, so that quadricep muscle. If you find that you're like super flexible and you maybe don't have as much sensation in the top of your thigh here, you could also potentially lay back fully. But this, as you can kind of see here, I don't know if you can, but this provides a pretty significant back bend in the low back, the low spine, and also really ramps up the, the pulling and the stretch that I feel across the top of my right thigh. So I'm gonna <laughs> be upright for this part. So find what works for you again, that four or five out of 10 here in this half saddle pose. If you're propped up on your elbows like me, you might periodically let the head drop. Neck is open. Really just let the head hang for maybe three breaths or so. When you're ready to pick your head up, you might inhale as you pick your head up and then tuck your chin toward your chest, gaze toward your left foot. If at any point it feels like it's a little bit too much on your neck, you can always bring one of your blocks or your textbooks behind you to rest your head on. Relax your right foot, your right leg. You might even, with your right hand, massage your right foot a little bit. Give your foot some love. If you're laying back fully with your back against your mat, or if you're on your elbows like me, you still potentially have a little bit of a back bend in the low spine if you're, again, if you're propped up on your elbows. And notice here especially, what is it like to breathe deeply in this shape where you can breathe into the low part of your belly and almost like experience a stretch across the front of your body. Take another long, full breath in here. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale, begin to straighten through the arms. Very gently extend your right leg long to meet your left. Maybe you massage out your right knee just a little bit. And then again, just pause for a moment. Notice any differences between right and left legs. Notice if there's any areas of warmth maybe that have built up in your right leg as compared to your left. Maybe you even detect the slightest amount of almost like a, a movement or something flowing through your right leg. And according to traditional Chinese medicine, again, which in yoga is rooted in, that sensation is actually your chi or your life force energy or prana, as it's called in yoga. And the in practice helps the chi flow more freely through the body, in particular through meridians in the body, but we won't get into that today. As you feel ready, we'll move on to the left side. So bending your left knee, ensuring that the knee is in line with your hip, and then bringing your left foot to the outside of your left hip. Top of your foot is flat against your mat. And notice that your left side might be different from your right. So 
move slowly, just kind of notice where it feels like you hit that four or five out of 10 on a scale of one to 10. I know for me, I actually feel some more intense stretch in my left ankle, whereas I didn't feel it as intensely on my right side. And so I'm actually gonna prop myself up a little bit more, coming up almost to straight arms, little bend in my elbows. Well, it's actually a pretty big bend if I look at it on the screen. Again, any knee sensitivity, you can bring a blanket underneath your left knee or roll part of your mat over to support the knee. If at any point the sensation in your left ankle feels too intense, you can always pad underneath your left foot to prop it up a little bit more. But here we are in particular targeting the top of your left thigh, so the quad muscle. You might even feel a stretch across the kneecap. And again, maybe even a little bit of a compression in the low back as this pose can also bring in, depending on where you are sort of propping up your torso, it can also bring in a, an arch in your low back, low spine, a little bit of a back bend. You know from the first side that we won't be here for too long. So can you still breathe deeply? Maybe really breathing into the low part of your belly to sort of expand that front body. Maybe massaging your left foot if you can reach it. Again, you could always let the head melt back for a few breaths, maybe three breaths or so. Really stimulating the throat chakra. Which, according to yoga, is a source of communication. speaking our truths or practicing satya, which is one of the yamas, according to yoga. As best you can, allow the muscles in your legs to be relaxed, your jaw to be relaxed. Your shoulders might be doing some work if you're propped up on your elbows or your arms. That's okay. Take a long, full breath in here. Exhale, sigh it out. Begin to straighten the arms and then very gently extend your left leg to meet your right knee. Be massage out the right, excuse me, left knee for a moment. Again, notice if there's any soreness or stiffness. That's a sign that you targeted those connected tissues. And then when you feel ready, just simply begin to lie down on your mat and we'll lie on our backs for just a moment. Arms extended alongside you. Maybe the feet flop out to the side. And again, just notice left and right legs. Maybe do a quick body scan, starting at your feet, working your way up the body just to notice any lingering sensation. Any swirling energy or pulsing energy, also known as chi, that might be floating through your body.
And then whenever you feel ready, just gently flip over like a pancake and bring yourself up to your forearms. And you'll want your forearms parallel. So I'm gonna just show you real quick. You want your arms parallel like this, forearms parallel, fingers spread wide, pressing into the mat. And maybe if you can, you can pull the shoulder blades together down your back, and gently pulling the shoulders away from the ears. And you might pick up your legs, point your toes, extend your legs long, just to create a little bit more room in your hip flexors. Really press down with your pelvis and imagine that you can almost grow your spine out of your pelvis. I know it sounds a little weird, but if you puff out your belly, really press down your uh, pelvis into the mat, you can lengthen your spine just a little bit more. Play around with the length of uh, distance from your elbows to your shoulders. So the further your elbows are from your shoulders, the less intense of a stretch this will be across your back. The closer your, are, your elbows are, excuse me, to being underneath your shoulders, the more intense back bend this will be. So again, find what works for you. Once you find that four or five out of 10, hold in relative stillness. You might allow the head to hang between the shoulders. Maybe you bring a block or a textbook underneath your forehead for some extra support. You could also keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Maybe gazing just at the center of uh, the tips of your fingers in between your hands. You could potentially allow the shoulders to kind of round forward for a moment and hug them back just so you have the awareness of what it feels like to have your shoulder blades hugging together down your back. Breathe deeply here into the low part of your belly, that low, low point. And notice how that maybe offers a massage to your low back where there's some compression or sensation. You might also imagine that you could target your inhales to the tops of your shoulders, your traps, sides of your neck, as that may be an area where you experience some sensation as well, since you're pressing your arms into the floor to prop yourself up. I'm gonna take a sip of my tea because it's right here. <laughs> I don't know where you are located, but here in Boston, it was recently extremely warm. And then we woke up today and it was in the 60s. And so suddenly I'm back in, as you can see, sweat hands and drinking warm tea. All right, take another long, full breath in here. Exhale, begin to gently allow your torso to melt down towards the mat. Maybe you wing your elbows out to the side, stack one hand on top of the other and rest your forehead or one cheek on the back of your hands. Just really letting your whole body be heavy and supported by the ground beneath you. If it would feel good, you could bend your knees and maybe windshield wiper the knees from side to side, the legs from side to side. It's almost like an internal massage for your low back. 
You might roll out your ankles, point and flex the toes. Ah, and then just allow yourself to be still for a moment. You'll notice that we've paused either in between sides and in between shapes during this practice. And this offers the body a chance to integrate the movement that it's just done. And it's known as a rebound or resonance pose, this more neutral shape that we take in between sides or in between shapes. Whenever you feel ready, you'll come back up and perhaps just for a moment in a seated position, but you'll want your blocks at the front of your mat. And then come back to a tabletop position, maybe with your arms, whoops, slightly more forward of your shoulders. So it's almost like a pseudo downward dog, like a baby downward dog. And then just drop your belly, lift your heart, almost press your heart through your shoulders, in between your shoulders. Round the spine, push the floor away, tuck your chin toward your chest. And then on your next inhale, step your left foot forward, coming into a low lunge. And here you might wanna pad your back knee, your right knee with your blanket, or maybe folding your mat over for once. Oops. And your blocks will come to frame your left foot and potentially be on the tallest height, framing your left foot. And here, you'll want to shift your hips forward and down. You might experience a little bit of a back bend in the low spine. And play with where you have the blocks. It might feel better to have the blocks directly underneath your shoulders for a little bit more support. That will also encourage a really long straight spine. You could also bring them again forward towards your foot, which will potentially decrease the amount of sensation you feel in your low spine. But here in this, what's known as high flying dragon, I know it's like the weirdest name, <laughs> you'll um, feel potentially some sensation across the top of your right, right quad, so the top of your right thigh. Similarly, potentially to when we were in that half saddle position. You could also experience maybe a stretch across the um, hip flexor, which is the muscle that connects your hip and your thigh muscles. You might even feel a stretch across some part of your left leg as you lunge forward here. And I just noticed my shoulders were kind of slouching forward. Again, hug the shoulder blades together down your spine. Heart reaches forward, maybe chin parallel to the ground and gaze is forward. At any point you want to drop your head again, just to kind of stretch out the back of your neck, you could do that. For the most part, keeping that cervical spine, the back of your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Take a long, full breath in here. Sigh it out the mouth. Notice if anything is maybe starting to quiver or there's some heat building. Can you breathe into those areas of your body? Take another long, full breath here. 
Exhale, begin to straighten out through your left leg. A ah, little sigh of relief. Maybe walking your blocks a little bit backwards. Maybe lifting your left toes up towards the ceiling, coming into a half split. If you find that maybe the floor isn't too far away, you can reach your hips back more towards your right heel. Maybe bring your hands to frame your left leg, resting maybe your hands on the ground. You might even round your spine over your left leg. Be sure that you're not dumping into your right hip. And so just gently look between your legs and make sure that you're not sort of leaning your hips to one side. And here in this half split, you might experience a stretch across the whole back side of your left leg. That right quad is still working, but maybe the sensation is lessened and it's not as intense. Take another long, full breath in here. Exhale, bend back into your left knee just slightly so that you can bring the left knee back to meet the right. Maybe remove your blanket for a moment. And then knees close together, toes untucked. Rest your hips toward your heels. Begin to melt your torso over your legs, coming into a child's pose, maybe with arms long and extended in front of you, or perhaps wrapped around fingertips reaching toward your heels. You might bring one of your blocks or your textbooks underneath your forehead to support the back of the spine, back of your neck rather. This is a great opportunity to just recalibrate your breath. It's a way to also activate the parasympathetic nervous system here, offering the body a physical sense of safety. Allowing every inhale to expand your ribs out side to side. Maybe the back spreads. Every exhale allows everything to gently soften and come back to center. Big full breath in. And exhale out. Again, big breath in and exhale. Inhale, straighten the arms, walk your torso upright. Plant your blocks back towards the front edge of your mat. Maybe grab your blanket if you know you need some knee support. And then come back to all fours again in that tabletop position with your hands a little bit more in front of your shoulders, sort of like a baby down facing dog. All right, I have cat litter all over my mat somehow. <laughs> so I apologize if you see me just keep swatting things away. Drop the belly, arch the spine, heart pushes through your shoulders. Exhaling round the back, push the floor away, maybe sort of rock forward and backward. Inviting in any movement. And then when you feel ready, step your right foot in between your hands. Allow the blocks to come to either side of your right foot, maybe on the tallest height. Hands rest on the blocks. Bend forward into your right leg. Allow your hips to move forward and down. I didn't say this on the first side, but press into the top of your left foot. That will also alleviate uh, any pressure you might feel in the left knee. 
bringing the blocks more underneath the shoulders will, oops, <laughs> sorry, will allow for a long spine and maybe accentuate a little bit of a back bend here, as well as shift the stretch that you feel across the top of your left thigh and maybe even on the outside of your right hip. Again, you could also have the blocks framing your front right foot. But wherever you are, shoulders are gently pulling away from the ears. Your spine is long, chin parallel to the floor. Soften the muscles in your legs, really allow the bones to support you, your arms as they press into the blocks support you as well. Again, you know from the first side that we will not be here forever, so the sensation is temporary. Breathe deeply, maybe again into the low belly, into the low back. You might even imagine that you could direct your breath toward the spaces where you feel some sensation in your legs. Take a long, deep breath in. Exhale, begin to walk your hands back, straighten through your right leg, hips back toward your heels. Maybe your right toes extend toward the ceiling. Coming into that half split. And again, be sure that you're not dumping into one hip. So look between your legs. Adjust yourself accordingly. You might be like, if you're like me right now, dumping into the left side. So being sure that you can align your hips. And again, moving the blocks to wherever feels most supportive. Here we are targeting the back of our right leg. So there might be a stretch across the hamstring. You might round forward over your right leg or you could continue to have a long straight spine. So find what works for you here. Maybe allowing the head to drop periodically just to stretch out the back of the neck. Another long, full breath in here. Exhale, gently begin to bend back into your right knee. Bring your right knee to meet your left. This time, again, move your props off to the side. But I'll invite you to either keep your knees together for this child's pose, or you could take a wide-legged child's pose, bringing your knees to almost the outer edges of your mat, sitting your hips back toward your heels, and then again, maybe reaching the arms forward or wrapping them around you. To give a little bit more weight to your hips, you can also wrap your arms behind you, maybe even actively pressing on your hips, sort of massaging or mushing your hips toward your heels. You grab your heels with your hands and pull a little bit to really encourage your hips to melt back toward your heels. If you find that the hips are far away from your heels, bringing a blanket or your pillow in between the hips and heels is a nice way to offer some support.
And really breathe deeply here in this child's pose. Maybe noticing your breath as it moves through the belly. Maybe you can even sense your belly against your thighs. Maybe open and close your jaw a few times just to relieve any tension in your jaw. As you feel ready, gently bringing yourself up from your child's pose. I'll invite you for Shavasana. You can choose to lay down fully on your mat, extending your legs long, extending your arms long beside you. You could also choose to take a seated meditation for Shavasana. As we will um, be doing a loving kindness meditation for this last bit. And so figure out how you would like to take your Shavasana, again, either lying down fully on your mat or perhaps in a seated position. Fidget as much as you need to in these first few moments to allow yourself to feel really comfortable and just release any lingering tension or sensation from this practice. You may choose to, whether you're lying down or in a seated position, bring your hands to your heart in a prayer position. Maybe bringing your left hand to rest over your heart, fingers spread wide, right hand rests on top of left. If it feels safe to do so, you might close the eyes. You can also choose to keep a soft gaze. Now, as we move into our loving kindness meditation, I'll invite you to bring certain people to mind as we practice. And you'll do your best to really envision and feel the presence of that person or those people as we offer them the loving kindness meditation. And this is certainly completely optional, so you don't have to do it if you don't want to. I will repeat some phrases and invite you to either say them out loud or you may choose to say them silently to yourself. Let's first direct some compassion and loving kindness towards ourselves. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be free of suffering. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be free from suffering. Shift your attention now and call in the presence of someone that you really, truly care deeply for. Maybe this is a friend, a family member, a teacher. Maybe it's someone who is 
here or perhaps has passed on. And we'll offer them the same hope for loving kindness. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from suffering. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May your life be free of suffering. Now bring to your mind perhaps someone that you've had a boundary with or someone that you almost feel a barrier with or don't quite fully get along with. Feel their presence, even if it makes you feel a bit uneasy, but see if you can feel that without judgment of yourself or your reaction or without judgment of this other person. And we'll also send them loving kindness. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free of suffering. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May your life be free of suffering. Lastly, I'll invite you to think about anyone in the world, maybe the human collective as a whole, maybe individuals who have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, maybe individuals who have suffered racial injustices, individuals of color, anyone on this planet, on this earth who may be suffering right now. Let us also send them loving kindness. May you all be safe. May you all be happy. May you all be healthy. May your lives be free of suffering. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May all your lives be free of suffering. Take a long, full, deep breath here. And gently sigh it out. Again, big breath in. And exhale. Last one, fullest, deepest breath in. Let it all go. Release your hands to your lap if you were, and your hands at your heart. If you're lying down, gently roll yourself to one side. Straighten through the arms, push yourself up to a seated position. Allow your hands to rest on your legs or in your lap. Once more, may I be safe. May I be happy. 
May I be healthy. May my life be free of suffering. Lower your chin toward your chest for a moment. Slowly start to blink open your eyes. And come back to the space. Thank you very much for being here today and thank you for practicing. I hope that you are all safe, well, happy, happy, healthy, and all the things. Um, we will not have this class next week as I will be out, um, but we will resume the week after, which is June 15th. So take good care and I'll see you then.